where do you hope to see yourself 10 years from now? Um, I, hopefully I will establish uh, my company as a premier uh, Latino film studio in Hollywood. Okay. I want to focus on on producing uh, Latino films for the United States. The market is, uh, is uh, you know, uh, huge here. Uh, Latinos represent 50% of the ticket sales for a lot of the major studios. Uh, and uh, we never had a voice, um, just like, you know, any other ethnicity. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to get your voice uh, to be here and your story to be tell. Uh, I remember when I first moved back to United States, like uh, 13 years ago, I, or the first three years, I just went through the regular process that any other actor or talent will go through in the in the in the city, and uh, you know I w always have to read for you know the the guy who is a drug dealer, the guy who is a pimp, the guy who uh, you know cut the grass or clean the house of, and it never was a good part for me to feel proud doing this part. And I thought, wow, this is pretty sickening, you know, like. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I constantly ask, you know, like, um, you know, maybe there's a, no, no, the lead, but maybe a secondary actor that's a good guy, you don't have to be the drum dealer, you know? And, um, and they told me flat out, no, no, that's not the way it works. And that you got to do that part. And actually they even want me to exaggerate, uh, things that they thought that it represent me, which I, it never represent me. Like, you know, like have a beer and a, and a big chain of gold. Like we don't do that, you know, yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like so, I'm going to oh, make my accent thicker rather than try to avoid the accent. So I'm like, wow, you know. So at one point, I just really got sick of the system, and I said, you know what? I want to do something that I want to make my people proud uh, as a human being, as an artist. Uh, and I decided, okay, you know, if nobody believes in me, then if I have to uh, write it and produce it and develop, and all, then I'll just do that. I mean, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of work. <laughs> But if nobody else is is doing it, then somebody had to uh, step up and and speak. Yeah. And uh, and I'm very proud to be that person that did that. And um, uh, and I hope that the people follow. You know, and and even if if they don't, I know I done my job. So I go every day in bed and I completely pass out because I know I did my best. And as you know, that's that's all that counts in life. Knowing that you did the best and you would true to yourself. You you don't try to be nobody else. You don't try to imitate anybody. You just you you. And you know, it's great when 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 you discover the power that you have when you just you. Okay. Um were your family very encouraging when you started your filmmaking career? <laughs> My family at the beginning was not, mm. um, but I understand it's because you, you know you you moving to do something uh, that is out of the comfort zone. Yeah. So um, I I clearly remember when I was fourteen. Uh, well, I I wasn't thinking of film at that time. I was thinking about fighting, and I said that I'm going to move to the states because I was born in a very small city down in Corrientes in the north of Argentina. I said. Uh, you know, to my dad and my my two brothers and my mom, you know, I'm going to go and uh, live in the state and I'm going to be a, a world martial art champion or like a kickboxer champion. And they, they, all of them started laughing at the table um, and they couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but I knew that I'm going to do it. Uh, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, nothing. I, I just understand that they, they, they couldn't see it in their mind um, but as long as I saw it then you know it would be fine yeah <laughs> so what do you do during your free time I work <laughs> I don't have a free time oh, I work wow. uh, but I love I love what I do so mm -hmm. my, my hobby is my work okay so you know like I have fun doing what I love so I work 24 hours a day even when I'm when I'm when I'm taking a nap, when I do take a nap, um, I take a nap, which I call it like a power nap. Like I go and and find a quiet place and I start running my mind, you know, the things that I wanted to accomplish next, and and I visualize a lot. 
So even when I'm resting, I'm I'm working, you know. But I find it's the best way for me. To, like I get I get tense and nervous when I'm in vacation. I can't take it. Like if I go on a vacation for five days, uh -huh. by the second day I want to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I was reading your biography, um, it mentioned something about you being a sickly child when you're yeah. growing up. Mm -hmm. So right now, are you still sickly, or was that just with your childhood? No, that was uh, just when I when I was a, a, a kid. Okay. Uh, I was very sick. I have a severe asthma. I mm -hmm. uh, died actually twice, and they brought me back. And wow, yeah. So so my family were my dad and my mom were very desperate and trying to get something to help me with. So I was doing all kind of sports, swimming, everything, and even acupuncture. The guy. Uh, performing the acupuncture was a Chinese uh, master and he started teaching me Kung Fu and that's how I started in martial arts and um, when I was uh, about 10 I had so much training and improved my lungs and all my my breathing capacity that I, the sickness went completely away so that's the other thing like martial arts really did two great things for me. One is that it saved my life. Mm -hmm. I'm here thanks to the martial <laughs> arts. And the second and most important is that I can, uh, if I look back at everything that I accomplished in my life, I know that it was based on the principles and the building of the character that I got from the art. So, you know, the qualities of, a, of being disciplined, stickability, uh, always going the extra mile, uh, working as hard as you can, uh, uh, you know, paying attention to do sacrifices when you need to do them, uh, being able to take pain or, or rejection and don't give up. Yeah. Uh, those uh, principles that shape my character are definitely what it made me uh, the person that I am today. So I'm very grateful to the art, and I know because I constantly promote and teach uh, that it does the same thing for other people. So that's why one of the reasons that I always have a little bit of martial arts in the film. Um, and that's why the films were heavy into martial arts. But as I said, you know, now that we move into all the different type of features, like this is, for example, Chavez is actually really a, a drama that happens in the background of the martial arts of the, what is called today, the mixed martial arts. But... Um, although it's a, a drama, uh, uh, it has in the background with the mixed martial arts. So in the next movie that we do, and all, although it's action movie, of course I have some martial arts fighting within the movie, you know. And I, actually, kids and and audiences uh, love uh, seeing you know fights yeah. in the movie. So um, uh, so that's why I, I I do it, but also especially because I want to promote for all the things that it done for me. Nice. So, if you had to choose between martial arts and film, which would you choose? Huh. Uh, before, I, I would have said uh, martial arts quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, right now, I'm, I'm very involved with films. I think um, I, will, I will choose films now. And when it comes to films, there's a lot of criticism and you know, negative comments that come along the way. How do you deal with that? Just uh, don't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I I don't. Uh, um, I have a saying. Uh, or I, I used to train with a, a great master of martial arts. Uh, his name was Ed Parker. He discovered Bruce Lee, and he trained some of the biggest uh, people in in the world. He passed away now, but I train with him, and he told me, "Look, there's three type of people." The people that talk about what other people are doing, the people that watch what other people are doing, and the people doing it. So never pay attention to the first two. Just be the one doing it. So everybody talk about you and everybody watch you do it. And that's exactly what I do. Okay. So um, what advice would you give to people who want to become filmmakers? You know, uh, it's a tough business, mm -hmm. but so every business is a tough business. Uh, you know, if you especially if you want to achieve any level of success, even as a fighter, it's a tough business. 
uh, you know, as a filmmaker, it's a tough business. As a doctor, it's a tough business. You have competition, you have this. So my advice is very, very, very simple. It's one, never forget who you are and never try to be anybody else but you because when you are yourself, something great happens. There's so much power in being yourself empowers you, give you all the power that you need. So one, always be yourself. And the second one is never give up. And if you have those two in mind all the time, you keep in mind yourself who you are, how valuable you are, how unique you are, how special you are. And if you never give up, sooner or later, sooner or later, the goal is going to be your. And when you know that sooner or later it's going to be your, it's okay because it doesn't come today or come tomorrow. So those two are, to me, the essence of, of, the, of any success. Okay. So do you have any last words for our viewers? Um, just be yourself and go out there and kick some ass for me. <laughs> for you. For you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for being on the Crystal Beauty Show. And You're welcome. Look, and I hope the movie is going to be a success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. You have a good day. Bye. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Crystal Beauty Show. As usual, leave your comments. Like our Facebook fan page. Visit our website, which is www.crystalbeautyshow.tv. Subscribe to our channel. And until next time, this is Crystal Beauty saying bye-bye.